the simple sabotage field manual from the Office of Strategic Services, Washington, D.C., 19 January 1944, is an extremely silly manual, presumably for distribution in Nazi-occupied Europe, about how to be a really, really crappy worker or crappy manager. Um, as is my impression with most uh, classified documents, it's hard to imagine why they were ever classified and certainly why they were classified for over 60 years. They declassified this uh, in 2008. Um, but uh, it's, it's, uh, it's valuable just for its comedic effort. Here you have a 20-page document, and I'll link to the PDF below, that just tells you how to be a really crappy worker, how to store your tools improperly, um, how to ruin lubricant. Uh, and the funniest part, oh, I'll add, uh, it does, it, it is a good segue to a question about libertarianism that I will ask at the end of this video. But first, I just want to read to you what I think is the funniest part, and that's on uh, page 18 where they talk about uh, general interference with organizations and production, section A, organizations and conferences. Insist on doing everything through channels. Never permit shortcuts to be taken in order to expedite decisions. Expedite decisions. Uh, make speeches. Talk as frequently as possible and at great length. Illustrate your points by long anecdotes and account for personal experiences. Never hesitate to make a few appropriate patriotic comments. When possible, this is my favorite one in the, in the whole document. When possible, refer all matters to committees for, quote, further study and consideration, end quote. Attempt to make the committee as large as possible, never less than five. Uh, for any status tuning in, that might, that might cast Congress in a whole new light when they say we're appointing a committee to, uh, to slash the budget or a committee to do anything else. Never less than five. Uh, bring up irrelevant issues as frequently as possible. Haggle, haggle over precise wording. It goes on and on. And this is written so formally in the, in the military fashion that I'm familiar with, with, with the all numbered or lettered paragraphs and subparagraphs. Just telling people how to be really crappy workers. It's kind of funny. Okay, so the segue into my libertarian question comes from the section motivating the saboteur. Motivating section 3, subsection 1, paragraph A. Gains, meaning the prospective gains from sabotaging something, gains should be stated as specifically as possible. Uh, for the area addressed. A simple sabotage will hasten the day when Commissioner X and his deputies Y and Z will be thrown out, when a particularly obnoxious decree or restriction will be abolished, when food will arrive, and so on. Abstract verbalizations about personal liberty, freedom of the press, and so on will not be convincing in most parts of the world. In many areas, they will not even be comprehensible. So, apply this, apply this to libertarianism. Is it true that, as even Ron Paul suggested, although I don't think he had this in mind, that the, the tangible things, like the TSA, uh, that's what convinces people. Not any idea about liberty, uh, uh, not at all. Uh, abstract ideas, that, that's Mises, that's, that's for intellectuals. So th those are my questions. Is, is the public at large capable of understanding libertarianism? Is it more, certainly they're both important, but is it more important to, to educate or to, or to separate yourself, uh, to isolate yourself with those people who have the same conception of property rights as you do? Here's another question. If self-ownership self-ownership 
and combined with the Lockean idea of property rights, if that's the foundation of property, and if Hoppe's um, argumentation ethics is the basis for self-ownership, then what about people who are incapable of arguing? Do they demonstrate self-ownership? Where does the self-ownership begin? How about animals? Do animals demonstrate self-ownership? Uh, this isn't such an absurd idea when uh, when Aristotle made the defense of slavery, of the institution of slavery, uh, he distinguished people who are capable of reason from people who are not. I think these are, for me, like, sort of having fully explored, like, all the common uh, economics of libertarianism, I'm kind of more and more turned to these, these issues. I'll be talking... I'll be talking more about them in my next book review, which will be Albert J. Knox, Memoirs of a Superfluous Man. Stay tuned. It's going to be awesome. Have a good night.